Everyone's talking about the Game Boy right now, but I want to talk about the dark side of childhood gaming. I have lost most of my childhood Game Boy saves, despite putting in thousands of hours on my handhelds. Please don't be like me. Let's talk about getting around that and check out a couple super affordable products that can help you manage your Game Boy carts. This video was sponsored by Nerd or Die and their Snowed In Winter Sale. Stay tuned till later in the video to find out my favorite stream package and how I've been completely overhauling my stream due to the awesome stuff that they provide. We are going to be looking at the analog pocket soon, don't worry. But in the meantime, I'm late to the party checking out the GB operator from Epilogue and the GB01 cart reader. I really wanted to hate the GB operator for quite a few reasons, but I found myself liking it quite a bit compared to the competition, so let's talk about it. I'm Evil's Vox, the stream professor, and I was definitely a Game Boy kid. I didn't have an NES or SNES growing up, but we were mostly a PlayStation and PC house. But I had lots of Game Boy game time at home, on the go, at school when I wasn't supposed to, etc. But playing these carts is a process that hasn't always aged super well. I've previously talked about the GBA Consoleizer, a repackaging of Game Boy Advance hardware into a TV console that outputs HD video. And in fact, I even have a super sick custom Epos Vox themed one now, thanks to the awesome people over at Game Tech and Space Pirate Prints. This thing is incredible, but it's kind of pricey or requires some very hands-on mods. And on that video, many of you asked for just a way to simply play your childhood carts on your computer without having to start over on your saves. Here's two similarly priced pieces of hardware that let you do just that. The GB01 cart reader from Submodule and the GB operator from Epilogue. The GB01 is about $40 US and the GB operator is about $45 US. These are super affordable and very accessible. I love that cart dumping and save managing is no longer this esoteric nerdy thing. It's very simple now. The GB01 actually released first, and I've had this hanging out in my retro gear for about a year or so now, waiting on me to get around to this backup project. Then earlier this year, the GB operator showed up, and I was honestly a tad skeptical about everything about it. The company, Epilogue, immediately cast red flags to me by clearly taking their naming idea from analog and trying to emulate their whole shtick entirely, and even the design language of the GB operator very closely resembles some of the analog FPGA consoles. I wanted to consider it a knockoff or a cash grab, but surprisingly, it's very competitive to the GB01, and the experience was maybe a little bit better. Both devices are beautiful. The GB01 has this lovely designed PCB with like graphics on it and all just lovely. It has a slot for you to connect to your cartridge and then a USB C, it's USB 2.0 still, and it just lets you slide your cart right in. It looks great, but it's all exposed, and it's more of kind of a dongle than, I guess, a desk gadget. The GB operator, on the other hand, was designed to sit upright on your desk and act more like an actual cart reader for your PC than a dongle. You could even put it on your PC case and pretend you have a Game Boy slot on your computer. This difference is also prevalent in their available feature set. The GB01 is purely used to dump ROMs from your game carts, pack up your save files, and then write saves back to the cartridge. The GB operator, on the other hand, has an emulator built into the software so you can plug it in and play directly and then quickly write your save back to the cart. All of the marketing fluff and oversimplified explanations of this thing state that you're playing the game directly off of the cart, but that is not the case. You're still downloading the ROM from the cartridge to your computer, emulating that ROM, then when you're done, you know, closing the emulator, you write the save back to the cartridge. There is some back and forth involved there, including a fair bit of waiting. It's not like the GameCube Game Boy player that had actual Game Boy hardware playing it right there. Otherwise, these are fairly identical devices. Both connect over USB-C 2.0, read Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, and let you back up your saves. Had I had this stuff set up when I swapped my Pokemon Crystal battery last year, I wouldn't have lost the save file. We'll talk about this in a minute. I spent a weekend dumping my Game Boy collection and testing these two back and forth. I also discovered my childhood copies of Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Gold are missing, which may be the only carts left with original saves on them. That's really frustrating. I think they're in, they're both in Nintendo 64 transfer pack somewhere where I was playing uh, Pokemon Stadium, but where? I don't know. <laughs> the software of these two devices are mostly identical as well. Options for downloading the ROM or the save or uploading the save back to the cart are provided. This allows you to take emulator saves you've played before on PC and put them back on your physical carts as well. 
if you've been playing emulators this whole time and and you've just picked up the analog pocket or you want to just start playing on a fancy new screen modded handheld or something and you want to swap your workflow over this is a seamless way to do so you could also use this for say pokemon files where you download your save file off of your cartridge use something like fex to edit your pokemon save file add in pokemon make them shiny adjust their level do whatever you want and then download that back to your cart without having a game shark or messing with any of that like it's pretty neat the gbo1 software however fails to download cover art for every single game every time i try which is a little frustrating while the gb operator does not it's not a big deal but a weird annoyance regardless there's also an annoying step in the gbo1 app to manually choose if you have a gb gb color or gba game in the slot where the gb operator doesn't make you do that again not a huge deal but if you're backing up a whole lot of games that extra click matters the GB Operator app, on the other hand, doesn't remember your save location. So if you are doing a lot of back-to-back -back dumps, prepare for a bunch of needless extra clicks. That was annoying. Also, for some weird games, the GBO1 software wanted me to specify the flash type for the save and the size, which I had no clue what that would be. And that was frustrating. I just used the operator for those games, which had no such issue. Ugh. Some saves also transfer so fast in the GB Operator app that you wonder if it's even transferred at all. So I kept retransferring saves thinking it hadn't actually done anything. It, it, it needs a, a, a save confirmation dialogue. The GB Operator app performs data integrity checks, which help make sure that your ROM download is actually correct most of the time, which is pretty nice. However, the USB cable included in my GB Operator packaging was completely bad. I had tons of disconnect issues and my first attempt at transferring a save from the, the, the a GBA cart over to the computer that I was doing live on stream. Took over an hour to get the save downloaded. We are at 16%. Yeah, we're not. Jesus. I used the same cable on the GBO1 and had similar issues. That's when I finally realized it wasn't just the operator being crap. Swapping to the cable that came with the GBO1, things were fine. Something I almost forgot to talk about was the amazing, the legendary Game Boy camera. This thing was so cool as a kid, letting you take photos, take selfies before selfies were a thing, and even edit photos and use those photos in a weird shooter game. But getting those photos to the digital realm has always been a tad annoying. No more with these card readers. The GB operator dumps 128 by 112 PNG files in black and white, ready for you to share and use to your heart's content. I've got accidental selfies as a kid, edited photos of my family members from the early 2000s, and even a photo of my childhood Yu-Gi-Oh card box that was stolen in the 4th or 5th grade. The GBO1, on the other hand, gives you 128 by 112 PNGs as well, but also .pgm files, presumably with more data that you could use somewhere, and a .save backup to keep everything preserved as much as possible. Nice. With a recent update, the Operator GBO1 software also gives you filters that you can apply with the different color palettes and things like that from the original Game Boy camera software that you'd run on the Game Boy. However, you don't get to like pick and choose these to edit on the fly. You just select a palette that you download all of the images with it pre-applied. So, eh, you could just do that in Photoshop, I guess. I did still have more I overall issues with original Game Boy games uh, reading correctly on the GB Operator than the GBO1. But I did have an instance where downloading the ROM from a Pokemon Blue cart didn't work on the GB01, but worked fine on the GB Operator. I also had plenty of instances where the emulator in the GB Operator app either wouldn't read the ROM on the cart at all, or would play the game inverted, upside down, etc., while the exact same ROM file it downloaded from the cart played just fine in the actual MGBA emulator. Weird, but clean your carts regardless. Speaking of emulators, let's talk about that. When you first click play with a game in the GBO1 app, it's pretty slow to dump the ROM from the cart. You will definitely have to wait a moment. The USB connection is bottlenecked by the slower cart speeds of the time, of course. Thankfully, subsequent play presses for the same game is results in it launching immediately, as the ROM is already cached on your system. Even when I swapped games, unplugged and replugged the operator, all that stuff, the cache was there, the game loaded instantly. Unfortunately, that cache is not used when downloading the ROM for saving it to an actual you know, file, so you'll have to wait again when downloading it. That's a little weird. Every once in a while, while writing the save, it will stall and just kind of go really slowly. Don't know why this happens. I also had this happen on the GB01, where it would just get stuck at 0%, and I had to replug the whole thing. I'm kind of glad I had both of these, because being able to swap between them based on what game worked on one and not the other, and which game cooperated at all, was a huge boon to me finishing this backup project in a reasonable amount of time. So, that's cool. 
The GB operator is using the MGBA emulator to play its games. That's great, it's probably the most accurate Game Boy emulator and my new favorite, while I used to prefer Visual Boy Advance back in the day. My issue is they seem to be using an old dev build, from what I've heard, and source code isn't disclosed anywhere, which is likely a huge licensing violation. Yeah, disclose your source code when you're licensing open source programs. There could be a a different type of licensing for MGBA, but I imagine it's a problem. Plus, you don't have much control or settings available to you that you would in the normal emulator. Hell, half of the GB operator's actual settings in general aren't even fully implemented, and I'm I'm pretty late to the party here. It's not like I'm using a pre-release or beta version of the software. Like, it's just still unfinished. You are going to have a much better experience downloading the ROM using the app and then playing in the actual MGBA emulator for it, but they do provide you a nice crisp scaled playback if you just want to play in the operator app and not bother with any of the extra kind of nooks and crannies. Plus, it runs on Mac and Linux as well, which is pretty nice. So why would you want one of these? These tools are crucial as Game Boy games have a battery in them that eventually runs out, preventing, preventing them from working properly and preventing you from saving anymore, which is kind of important, uh, and eventually they could leak and damage the cart too. Thankfully, swapping out the batteries on these carts uh, just kind of involves snipping off the old one, ordering a cheap pack of them from Amazon, and doing the most basic of soldering to reattach the new one. There's a whole My Life in Gaming episode on battery swapping. I'll have it linked below. The problem is, as I discovered with my copy of Pokemon Crystal, is that while a dead battery can still kind of preserve your existing save onto the cart as you're playing, once you remove that battery, the save vanishes with it. To swap batteries and keep your save intact requires carefully still providing the right amount of power to the cart while you're swapping the battery, and that's a whole messy thing. Had I had one of these first, I could have just downloaded the save, then swapped the battery, then uploaded the save back to the cart, and still had my save intact and saved me a lot of headache. I, ho I, I just hope my gold and yellow copies still have my childhood saves on them, where wherever they're hiding. Please come home. I've dumped all my saves now, at least on the carts that I have available, and I can freely swap batteries on all my carts without worrying about losing anything. If you care about your childhood games, you should be doing this too. Batteries are super cheap, I'll have some link below, and these cart readers are very, very affordable at just $40 and $45. If you've watched any of my streams recently, you know I've had a blast completely revamping my stream graphics, and with that, I've been using Nerd or Die's Stream OS package. This was a package I effectively requested from the Nerd or Die devs, I'm even in the commercial for it that they run, which is pretty sick. And at least from my tinkering around, this is one of the more in-depth packages that you can get. It is all classic Windows 95, Windows 98 era themed. They have multiple themes within this package. So you've got the classic, you know, looks like the operating system theme, but then you've got a Vaporwave one, a nighttime one, a Cyberpunk one, and then you can make your own. Tweaking the customs, you can change every icon, you can pick and choose your different elements and your widgets. They even have alerts that have different little pop-ups you can customize the graphics for. It is pretty wild and this has been the most like i don't know impressed or or involved i've been in a pre-made stream package in a very long time i feel honestly really weird recommending it to you all because i don't want you all to have the exact same one as me but that's the cool thing about the customization is i'm spending all my time on stream making this my own so then when you boot yours up and you pick yours up at eposvox.gg slash nerd or die and use coupon code eposvox to save 15 percent or check out their winter snowed in streamer sale Yours will end up looking completely different too, because you can customize it just the way you want. It is pretty stellar, and we're going to be doing a lot more streams as I kind of figure it out and tweak it for all my different use cases and things like that. Again, that's eposvox.gg slash nerd or die to upgrade your stream today. I wanted to dislike the GB operator for showing up with a bunch of reviews acting like it was doing something new and revolutionary when the GBO one had already been around, especially with epilogue riffing a little too hard on analog, but I honestly had a smoother experience overall with the GB operator. The GB01 was just more prone to disconnect issues and, and stalling out and that kind of thing. I, I'd say if you want one to use, just spend the extra $5 and go with the operator. I don't see why not. Plus, you can have it set up like you actually have a GBA slot in your PC, which is pretty neat. Links to everything mentioned in this video will be in the description down there, down below. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out my original uh, GBA consoleizer review, which is linked over here as well. Come chat with us about your childhood games over on Discord at discord.gg slash And remember, be kind, rewind.